Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to Well Fever. I'm Dan. It's been a while since my last video, but uh, I've been working on my shop, and so uh, I haven't had much time for the videos as of late. But here I am again, and today I decided to tackle something that's been extremely popular on my channel, and that is MIG welding square tubing. I'm going to go in it in detail. I'm going to show you the different welds and uh, hopefully uh, get you up to speed on what you need to know in order to make a decent weld on square tubing. So, without any further ado, here we go. Okay, so to begin, I have uh, several little pieces of square tubing here that we're going to work with today. But I wanted to start off by talking about the different welds that are actually taking place here when you join square tubing together. Uh, more often than not, most of us are going to be joining square tubing in this fashion here. We're going to butt, up, butt it up against another piece and make a 90 degree angle. This is probably the most common way to weld up square tubing. Usually a cap is placed on the end here. Sometimes people will just leave it open to whatever, you know, whatever the preference is, that's fine. Uh, but we basically will have several different types of welds here when we do, when we weld up a piece of square tubing in this fashion. To begin with, right here on the ends, this surface here joining with this surface, this weld in between here will actually be a butt weld. On this side here, we have two surfaces. Because the edge of this square tubing is rolled over, it's actually somewhat rounded, we have a straight edge coming into a rounded edge. This is considered and called a flare bevel weld. This edge here is pretty much like a standard T-joint. And this will just be a simple fillet weld right in the middle. So we have two flare bevels, a fillet, and a butt weld. Okay, so the first operation here is going to be to tack weld this together. And the question comes in always, well, where do you tack? Well, if you tack on this side, the heat's going to draw the metal towards it, and it's actually going to lift up a little bit this way. If you tack on this side, the same thing will happen. The heat will draw the metal towards it, and it'll lift up in this fashion. If you tack on this side, same thing, might draw this way, tack on this side, same thing. So really the only safe way to go here is one of two options. You can either clamp this down really hard and go ahead and uh, put your tacks in that way. Or you can try the corners. I like to do the corners because it seems like it doesn't lift as much. I also put a little downward pressure when I do it. This is not going to pull so hard that you know you putting downward pressure uh, with your hand or with some kind of a tool preferably uh, is going to really warp this out and as long as you're putting some downward pressure when you lay a tack down if you lay the second tack on the opposite end that will draw the, the heat will draw it back towards it and you'll end up probably uh, nice and square and plumb anyway so anyway let's get on to it Okay, now that it's all tacked into place uh, really quickly so that you can see nothing really moved. Wasn't enough tack here to really distort anything. So let's go ahead and uh, weld this up. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the flare bevel weld. Uh, the point here, what I'm going to try to do is just hold in there so that the uh, puddle can just roll right into the crease there and get a full penetration weld. Now I'm going to switch it over and uh, do the other side just the same. It's kind of a delicate dance here because you want to hold long enough for the puddle to actually saturate and get in there. Uh, but by the same token, you don't want to hold so long that you either uh, penetrate right through the uh, tubing. Or worst case scenario also, you don't want to lay such a thick weld bead on it that it's going to be very difficult to deal with later. And uh, later on, of course, I'll show you uh, what I mean by that. Anyway, here's this weld, and it's going in at a very moderate pace. 
Now uh, we're going to go ahead and do the fillet weld. For the fillet weld, you'll notice uh, it goes a little bit quick here, but uh, yeah, it uh, it's a, it's again it's a dance between speed and filling it in properly, and you just have to kind of do it a few times and maybe practice it to make sure you get it just the way you want it. Here I'm starting in at the at the tack weld, and I'm just slowly going in an up and down motion, filling in the top and the bottom the best I can. I don't want any undercut, and I don't want any voids, so I'm taking my time here to make sure that it's filled in properly. Now we get to the edge weld. This one can be a little bit tricky, and I recommend if you have the ability to lay it out so it's a flat weld, it'll be much easier, which is what I did here. And this one has to go, has to scoot along relatively quickly because the last thing you want is to burn holes or uh, burn out the edge of that weld because it's mighty thin at that portion. And here is the finished product, starting with the uh, flare bevel welds and the uh, butt weld, the other flare bevel. And there is the fillet weld on the back there. Uh, I went ahead and ran this through the uh, with a little bit of wire wheel. Uh, that way it looks nice and shiny and clean so you can get a good look at it. Uh, basically, this is the end result. This is a good result because... If you want to grind it down smooth and flush, if this is going to be a decorative item, uh, then you don't have much weld to grind down. And if it's not going to be decorative, it's going to be functional or some kind of a tool or something that doesn't matter. The weld is presentable, it looks decent, and it can be left just as it is without any problems whatsoever. So I'm happy with it. Okay, so I went ahead and hit this uh, the welds with a grinding wheel and a little bit of uh, sanding for a high polish finish. That way you can get an idea of what it'll look like if you're going to do a decorative piece. Hey listen, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, rate and subscribe to my channel and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.